Remember me is getting buffed? Cool, no complaints. Let's move on. Save the best for last is getting changed? Oh my god, this is awesome. Save has single-handedly won games for killers that I've played against, since it's so easy to camp and tunnel with it. I really hope the devs are nerfing it. <sighs> Alright, let's look. This perk is very powerful for such a small downside and can be abused by killers with special attacks to avoid the downside entirely. Its ability to encourage toxic playstyles isn't healthy, so we're comfortable tuning it down. Alright, sure. Sounds good. I really hope they did something good with this. Uh, let's look. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up! Hey guys, today I want to share with you my thoughts on Save the Best for Last. This perk can single-handedly be the reason you 4k in an otherwise unwinnable circumstance. The perk is simple. Every time you hit a survivor with a basic attack, you gain a token, which decreases your basic attack cooldown by 5%, up to 8 tokens for a maximum of 40%. If you hit your obsession with a basic attack, you lose 2 tokens. The problem with this perk arises when killers decide they want to camp or tunnel. If a killer wants to hit a survivor right as they get unhooked, all it's going to do is make their attack cooldown less. If anyone tries to body block that isn't the obsession, the killer gets rewarded with less attack cooldown. By the time survivors realize you have this perk, it's already too late. Even with good communication, it's incredibly difficult to force the obsession to stop everything they're doing just to take hits. A single perk should not force a random survivor to stop everything to body block. And with camping, it makes getting one person out alive pretty much impossible past a certain threshold. Normally, if you want to get a safe unhook, you duo save to prevent grabs. With save, the killer can recover so fast that it makes preventing a down around the hook very difficult. Attack them right behind you. I didn't hear the frogs. Okay. Go, let's go. Be safe. Be safe. Be safe. The reward you get from this perk is way too high for the requirements to power it up. And keep in mind, I haven't even taken killers with special attacks into account. The demo in the previous clip only hit the obsession with special attacks, so he was able to stay at 8 tokens the entire game. Remember, save only affects basic attacks, so these killers with special attacks can completely negate the one downside of this perk. Also, you know how hook grabs are getting removed in the next patch? All it's going to do is make save even more popular. Since hook grabs are getting removed, people are going to run save to make sure they can always down someone at the hook. I really don't want this, and I have some really good ideas for how to change the perk, which you can skip to if you want. Anyways, to prove that save is way too strong, I played 10 games with save as my only perk. On top of that, I didn't use my power or the invitation abilities from the Masquerade event. How well did I perform with less attack cooldown being my only power? Let's take a look. I went into these games with a general plan. If my first chase wasn't with the obsession, I would commit to a down and hook the first survivor. After this, I needed to make my next 3 chases with the non-obsession so I could easily make it to 8 tokens. The only exception is if I needed to camp or tunnel. Unfortunately for me, Yoshi hit a flashlight save. Unfortunately for him, however, he's already been hooked, so I took the opportunity to down him and get him to second stage. Then I found my obsession, but since I had 8 stacks, I decided to commit to a down. Then, Yoichi decided to flashlight save again, so I decided to tunnel him out. I found Michaela on the way, and took her down instantly with only 4 stacks of save. I decided to drop her to chase Gabriel since I wanted my stacks back. But when I did, something really weird happened. Yoichi used For the People, which is the worst thing you can do against save. Switching the obsession to an injured survivor makes it so you only have to lose 2 tokens if you decide to down them. This makes it much easier for killers to maintain high stacks. I took this opportunity to get him out of the game. Now that the obsession is dead, the perk cannot gain or lose any stacks unless for the people was used again, which is incredibly unlikely. Uh oh. At this point the game is over since I'm able to end chases too quickly for the remaining survivors to recover. The first game ends with 4 kills and 2 gens left. No power, no invitation, and 2 flashlight saves, only using 1 perk. I decided to switch to Legion since I figured some survivors would play differently if I was Trapper. This game started with me finding my obsession first, which wasn't my main plan, but I decided to roll with it. And now that the obsession has been hooked, they're much less likely to take hits or get chased, so I'm free to get my stacks on everyone else. Unfortunately, I find her again, but since she's injured, I decided to take the down and lose all my stacks, but it's not a big deal since the game is already going so well. Even at 2 stacks of save, I'm able to snowball by slugging and pressuring the unhook. The game kinda just falls apart, so I'll call it here. 4k at 2 gens. These next few games pretty much all end the same, so I'll try to make the commentary a bit shorter. Chase Cheryl. 
The 180 flicked to the Cheryl chasing me. Down, Cheryl. I smacked the Meg falling from the sky. Down, Meg. After some time, I have 8 tokens at 5 gens. And since the survivors have taken too long to unhook, I decided that it's time to show you how powerful this perk can be around hooks. Meg is in the way, so I down her, wasting no time at all, and go straight for Cheryl. For some reason, she didn't commit to the unhook, so I'm able to get a quick 2-tap, even though she's the obsession. Just like that, I'm able to close out the game at 4 gens, just because of a few survivor mistakes and one perk. If I didn't have save here, the default weapon cooldown would have allowed Cheryl to save safely, which would have given the survivors a chance to come back. Because of one perk, I'm able to 4k at 4 gens in an otherwise terrible map for a default killer. This game is the perfect example of rewarding the killer for tunneling. Fast forward to here, where I have 4 tokens and there are 2 survivors pressuring the unhook. Neither of these survivors are the obsession. I decided to take advantage of this by getting a quick hit on Steve and immediately going back to the hook to prevent Nancy from saving. I hit her, and now the survivors are in a pickle. If I stay next to the hook, there's nothing they can do to unhook, unless the obsession comes in trades, which would destroy my stacks. I could have done this, but I wanted the game to be interesting, so I went for Steve and let Nancy unhook. I ate a dead hard, but with 7 stacks to save, Steve was just barely able to make it to the window, where otherwise he would be able to run across the map to safety. But fast forward a bit, I decided to tunnel Steve since I felt like I was beginning to lose the game. What comes next is the perfect example of the save rewarding me for tunneling. The survivors are in comms, so they coordinated a SWAT team rescue mission to prevent the tunnel. Unfortunately for them, I had 8 stacks to save. Nancy gets in the way, so I smack her and move on. Leon gets in the way, so I smack him and move on. Steve isn't able to make it anywhere, even with two hit tanks. I down Steve and instantly turn and down Leon. I'm able to recover and hook him before Nancy can get Steve up. Unfortunately, Steve hit me with power struggle, but it didn't take too long to catch back up, and soon enough, he was out of the game. In a 1v3 against 8 stacks to save, the game falls apart, and I close it out with a 4k at 1 gen. put save into perspective again, here's the end of the game. So, I finally find the obsession, who is missing all game. I hit her and she decided to run across the map to save. She used the speed boost and sprint burst to make a ton of distance. However, with 30% decreased recovery time, I'm still able to catch up to her well before she's able to unhook. One perk being able to provide this much value is just... <sighs> wow. Anyways. <laughs> Fast forward. This game showed off how RNG can be the downfall of a survivor group. Throughout the game, I picked up on the survivor's habits. I was easily able to tell that Fang was the best survivor of this group after the first chase. She also really liked to hold forward, which will be important later. Since I had one hook on the obsession, who was good in chase, I decided to not chase her for the rest of the game. I gathered stacks of save and slowly won the game, since her best player was forced to unhook and sit on gens, while the less experienced survivors quickly went down in chase with the help of save. Fang was unable to take hits since she refused to heal and constantly tried to take chase. Since she held forward so early, I had no interest in taking the chase. Also, the game kinda is just over, so yeah, let's talk about that. Remember when I said that Fang's habits would be important later? Since I realized she liked to hold forward, I took advantage of that by faking chases to waste her time while pressuring the other survivors. Time went on and they were unable to recover. 4k at 1 gen. Also, why was RNG their downfall? It's all because Feng was the obsession. The one survivor I struggled to catch it was the one survivor I had no reason to catch. If a less experienced or more aggressive survivor was in my way more often, I would have struggled much more this game. It would have been much harder to keep high stacks, and I might have even lost. Anyways. Fast forward. This game wasn't too interesting. I was able to hold one area of the map very well throughout the game, and with a constant low recovery speed, things were going well. That's not good. Remember how I said for the people was the best thing that can happen when running save? Well, that's only if you use it poorly. Cheryl must have realized that I had save, and used for the people to make herself the obsession right after I lost 4 stacks. This was very smart, and if the survivors were able to prevent me from getting hits until Cheryl healed, all of my pressure would be instantly gone. What? Fortunately, the game discontinued normally, and I was able to regain all of my stacks and continue pressuring gens. A very close game, but still a 4k at 1 gen. A 
But fast forward, I was able to consistently stay at over 6 stacks of save this game, so chases ended too quickly for the survivors to come back. 4k at 2 gens and enjoy the rest of this game. <laughs> I walked into this game expecting a tough battle since this was a 4 man group. With a quick down, I hooked Ada and hit Kate for a stack. Since she was trying to take me to the other side of the map, I decided to return to the hook. Luckily for me, the non-obsession was there to body block, so I quickly got it down with the help of a big mistake. At 5 stacks, I knew that if I could get another non-obsession to unhook, I could easily snowball with a bunch of tokens. Unfortunately, that didn't happen, so I got a quick stack on the mag and moved on. I actually decided to go across the map and pressure the other two survivors, since Leon was making it difficult to keep my stacks. I got it down, and now I'm sitting at 8 stacks. After some thought, I felt like I would lose the game if I didn't tunnel. So, I went straight back for Kate, and with 8 stacks of save, I could easily snowball this if I played correctly. After Kate got saved, things started going very well for me. Knowing this is a 4-man group, I assumed that everyone would group up once I started to tunnel. They did exactly that, and I was able to get an insane amount of pressure in a small space. The survivors had no time to run away after I got hits, and no time to heal or do generators. They eventually fell apart, with two gens remaining. Save the Best for Last is so good at punishing altruism it hurts. While this game ends, try to imagine the outcome if I didn't have save. The 4-man would have body blocked easily if I tried a tunnel, and I might not have even gotten a kill. One perk has the potential to change a 0k to a 4k, by itself. And even though perks like Noed and Blood Warden can also turn a game around, those perks are endgame exclusive. Save gets value the moment you hit someone, and continues to get value for the rest of the game. Let that sink in. Anyways. The second I saw the map, I knew this is where things were going to go bad. With no way to easily catch up to survivors, all this team had to do was hold forward and prevent early hits and I would be useless. And they did, very effectively. After nearly two minutes, I had my first down, only because Michaela accidentally ran into me on a bad loop. I figured if I wanted to win this game, I would need to slowly build up stacks until I could camp easily. Unfortunately, the survivors weren't making any mistakes, and the obsession was willing to trade hits and downs to get rid of my stacks. Soon enough, there were two gens left and I had zero stacks. I still kept my plan in mind and desperately tried to build stacks while keeping pressure. This clip right here is when I knew for sure it was over. I'm chasing a survivor with Sprint Burst to a safe pallet with zero stacks of save. I had no idea how things were going to improve. My saving grace, however, was this Meg. How? Well, this is how. Meg held forward so hard that she looped the entire main building and ran right back into me. With a hook nearby, I could pressure a generator and a hook survivor at the same time. This clip here is an example of the survivors playing very safe and not letting me get any free hits. And this clip is the most intense moment in this video. Ace barely sneaks by and is able to rescue before I can interrupt. Michaela is quickly coming to body block right as I hit Ace, and I knew I had to down him or else the game was over. Meg is barely in front of me as I chase him down, and as I go to swing, I look up to avoid auto-aiming onto the Meg. I look down right at the end to secure the hit, and hit Michaela before picking Ace up. I had a feeling that the other gens were being worked on, so I went and checked, and I was right. Unfortunately, the survivors were trying so hard to finish the middle gen at the same time. I tried my best to snowball with injuries, and soon enough, I had two downs. But while this clip plays, I want to talk about how well these survivors are playing. Watch the last two survivors keep their distance from me while pressuring my two objectives. They get closer and closer to the generators and the down survivors until they force me to make a choice. If I commit to Michaela, Ace picks up the down survivors and I lose all of my pressure. If I commit to Ace, Michaela finishes the gen and gives adrenaline to the down survivors. Once I see Ace sneak into the building, I decide to commit to Michaela. I got the down but at the cost of a full team reset. After a lengthy trip around the world's longest fence... What is this fence? Oh my god, what is this fence? I down Meg. I hoped I would have enough time to prevent the gen from popping, but after a game-changing body block, the two survivors I hit instantly healed with adrenaline. Not only did this match have the most intense moment, it also had the most devastating moment. I knew the game was over at this point, so I managed to get one more hook stage. After an 8 game win streak only using Save the Best for Last, I ended my game with a 1k and 8 hook stages. 
My first loss required the survivors to play extremely well, use their perks effectively, use two good toolboxes, and get one of the best survivor maps. Of all the games that shocked me the most, this one did. I had no business doing this well just because I had a single perk equipped. Moving on. This is the final game, and it did not go well. After a long chase, this ace somehow turned into a Nia. Then she looped me for a long time, and then turned back into ace. I also grabbed ace, which denied me a stack of save. I had a horrible early game, only managing to gain pressure after 4 generators pop. After I downed Nia, I had to hard tunnel ace off of the hook to force the rest of the survivors to play altruistic. With all of the pressure now in this corner of the map, save starts to show its potential one last time. I'm able to constantly injure and down survivors that go for the rescue. I actually could have won the game here, but I made a huge mistake. I left the hooks. I assumed that Ace and Yui would reset so they could both save, but instead, Ace began working on a generator and Yui stuck past me to save. I was able to quickly rehook hook Nia after she traded with Fang, and after injuring Yui, I figured I needed to commit to a down to force the other two survivors to get off of gens and play for altruism. But, of course, the one person I needed to down had adrenaline. Game over. I downed Ace and accepted my 1k with 6 hook stages. And that concludes the- In order to put Save's insane power into perspective once more, I played a game of Perkless Legion with the brown add-ons for comparison. I ended up getting a 4k at 1 gen after playing super sweaty and taking advantage of a lot of survivor mistakes. Why did I do this? To prove that Save the Best or Last, by itself, performs as good, if not better, than Legion's entire power. To top it off, Legion isn't even the worst killer in the game. And by that logic, a killer with no power only using Save the Best for Last is better than entire killer's powers. This is not okay, and if you guys don't mind, I'd like to talk about some changes I would make to the perk to make it more fun to go against, and reward the killer for playing fair instead of tunneling. My first idea is to heavily change the perk while keeping it as a viable option for certain killers. Firstly, remove the basic attack requirement. If the obsession is injured in any way, you should lose tokens. This would prevent killers like Demo and Deathslinger from abusing the basic attack requirement to never lose stacks. Secondly, reduce the maximum tokens from 8 to 6. Save at 8 tokens is pretty much impossible to outplay, so capping the tokens at 6 would help the survivors come back once the limit is reached. Even at 6 tokens, save is still really good so the perk won't feel weak. Thirdly, hitting the obsession temporarily disables the perk. What do I mean by this? Well, you know how currently if you hit the obsession you still have a shorter cooldown? For this nerf, Hitting the obsession should make your cooldown default for that hit. This will encourage the obsession to take hits for survivors that are getting tunneled or camped. Lastly, the perk should disable when the obsession dies. Currently, if the obsession dies, the perk loses the ability to gain or lose tokens, but you still get the benefit of the perk at whatever amount of tokens you currently have. With this change, you should feel punished for killing the obsession because you didn't save the best for last. My second idea to make save a less toxic perk is to rework it entirely while keeping the idea of saving the best for last. Hear me out. When a survivor is hooked, you gain a token up to a maximum of 6 tokens. Each token reduces your basic attack cooldown by 5%. You do not gain a token when hooking the obsession. Hitting the obsession will cause your weapon to recover 20% slower. If the obsession dies, the perk deactivates. This new version of Save the Best for Last gets its power from hooking survivors instead of hitting them. The big idea here is to encourage the killer to get multiple hooks to power the perk up instead of tunneling and taking advantage of body blocking to win the game. And making the cooldown longer when hitting the obsession is a requirement to keep the perk in check. Let's say you get 3 hooks and the perk reduces your cooldown by 15%. If you want to chase the obsession to get your final fresh hook, the reduced cooldown from save will only make your weapon cooldown 5% longer, since it counteracts the 20%. If you save the best for last, you should barely feel the downside. If you didn't, you'll definitely notice the longer cooldown. I really like the perk with these changes because it rewards the killer for spreading out hooks and playing fair. Endgame saves will now be decided by how well the killer has played so far and will require good teamwork from the obsession if you want to successfully rescue survivors in the endgame. If you made it this far, thank you so much. This video was definitely out of my comfort zone, but I had a ton of fun making it. I doubt the perk will get changed anytime soon but I just wanted to make this video to raise some awareness about how toxic this perk can be. Being as strong as an entire killer power while only taking up one perk slot should not go unnoticed. Now, enjoy the final montage of Save the Best for Last ending chases super quickly. I'll provide captions to show what would have happened if I didn't have save.
dislike how he's... Okay. <laughs> 